Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. 
and you take into account every word and try to understand you will hear God's voice hallelujah and so Tati Becky will take it once again we are reading to 16 from verse 7 We speak of God's great secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Whoever, however, as it is written, no eye has seen no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thought of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, one knows the thought of God, except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what has freely given us. Verse 13, that is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truth in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgment among all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. Verse 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. May the good Lord add his blessings on the readings of today. Amen. God has a word for somebody. And I pray we will grasp the depths and the heights and the wide of his intent for us today. Hallelujah. God has not made a mistake and he is not going to make a mistake for calling you his own. Do you know why? Because God knew you before your parents set their eyes on you. It is not only that God foreknew you. God knows the last day and the last moment of your life on earth before you even get there. And so, nothing is a surprise to God. Please, can you lower me a little? Nothing is a surprise to God. We can call Something can happen today and is new to us. But God foreknew them before time began. And I pray for understanding for us. The Bible says, the Bible says, now I am totally gone. The Bible says, 
No. We declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. Amen. 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 A mystery. And that mystery is God's wisdom. We heard last Sunday wisdom, the purpose for wisdom is to be given to man to solve a problem. Wisdom is a solution remedy. Wisdom help us judge things right and know all about it and the best way to go about it. Amen. Amen. Though if you have wisdom and you do not have prudence, you may not have the power to execute that which the wisdom is showing you to achieve it. But the wisdom will help you to know by judgment. This is how it is. If you do it this way, it will work. If you do it this way, it will not work. If you do it this way, you will get this result. If you do it that way, you will get a different result. But because of what you are looking for, Wisdom will show you it is better you do it this way. But wisdom has finished its work on this. The prudence will become something that will push you in doing. That is why discipline is enough. It's good. Determination. Diligence. These are all package that comes from prudence. Amen. Amen. And so... God's wisdom, which is a mystery. And the word mystery simply means something that is difficult to understand. Something you cannot explain. No one can explain God's wisdom. And the truth of the matter is scalable shatayanda. It has been destined, not for God, but for humans. Amen. When we say something is destined, it means it has been preordained. Something that has been planned long before. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And the question is, what to whom? What is planned is for who? What has been destined is for who? The Bible says it is for us. And it is not to shame us, but to glorify us. Amen. The aiming is too small. Amen. <laughs> God wants somebody to be glorified. Amen. Seriously. Your morning, your downcast, and your worries, and uh, you feeling so down. It's not God's portion for you. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be happy and be joyful. The Bible says God himself rejoices when we rejoice. Amen. Amen. And so he has destined something. And that thing is a mystery. You cannot explain. It is difficult to even understand. And yet, they exist. Mm -hmm. And that thing is wisdom. It's that which will make a way out for you to become what you desire to become in the future. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The truth of the matter is it was destined for us before time. Mm -hmm. These are some of the reasons that make me know that God foreknew me before my parents came together to make me. Mm -hmm. The Bible makes it clear it was destined for us. 
Apostle Paul included himself and he was speaking to the church and that this wisdom that will help you become what God wants you to become was destined for you. It existed before time. Do you know what it means? It existed in the eternity. Before creation, this wisdom was there. But it was not destined for everybody. And so that wisdom was destined for a certain people. <laughs> and that is you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is you and I. That by that wisdom will be glorified. It's not about books. It's not about intelligence, no matter how intellectual. That wisdom is not for you. That wisdom is for those who have the spirit of God. Because that wisdom is God's wisdom. And God's wisdom made this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Last time, I was listening to a doctor. And I said to myself, scientists should respect and love and honor and serve God more. <laughs> because what the doctor said about human body is that when you eat, there is something in you that sprays on the food and makes the food digest. And that thing can even get finished. When you eat between times, when you overeat, it makes that thing work and overworks. But God wants us sometimes to fast. And so that thing will be preserved. And so God, in his wisdom, has given us a prescription, and that prescription will help human beings to live and fulfill that thing. Amen. And so everything God says you should do, you must ask God to help you do them because it is for your good and not for God. Amen. Including even fasting. The truth. God, your word is truth. Truth repairs brain. Brain damages can be repaired by the word of God. Because when you lie, when you wallow in fear, when you are saying that which is not in line with the truth, something goes wrong within you because you are divided. Part of you is saying you are lying. Part of you is saying this is not right. Part of And so you are damaging the brain. But when you speak the truth, it repairs the brain. Amen. And so God said, do not lie to one another. Speak the truth. Mm -hmm. It heals the brain. Mm -hmm. And so everything God in his wisdom has given to us, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. Some people are pathological liars and they don't know that they, they are getting mad even in the realms of the spirit and it can happen in the physical. Because people who lie, a time is coming, you will have no friend. Because this will find out about you. That will find out about you. A time is coming, you are like a madman. No one wants to associate with you. But the truth, the truth will make way. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's wisdom. But are you aware? It was destined for our glory. Before time began. And so Apostle Paul is saying that God knew him. Before he was born, people lived. Some were kings. Some were politicians. But that wisdom was not given to them by their intelligence, by their studies, by anything they did fit that time. Because they were not close to the spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives that wisdom. And I pray that we will desire to have that Spirit. Amen. You can find out if you are in a church and you have the Spirit or you do not have. Because uh, some live double lives. So. Some live double life, And if you live a double life, a secret life, 
is the first identification of your nature that you don't have anything with the spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible shows you to know if you have the spirit and if you have lost, please be revived. When the spirit is given, God does not take away anymore. But you can grieve the spirit. When you receive the spirit and the spirit is telling you what to do like a navigator, Go right, go left, and you refuse. It gets offended because you keep reloading, reloading. And if care is not taken, sometimes it is not reloading anymore. <laughs> and it means you can't go further if you don't know where you are going. The Spirit of God is given to us so we will walk on earth as though we were God. The Spirit of God is given to us so we will know the mind of God. Because without knowing the mind of God, you will never know how God thinks about you. Do you know how much I think about you and how much I care for you? Do you know my sleepless night for you? You don't know because you are not my spirit. Because of you and I, God does not sleep. He does not even blink his eyes. He does not slumber. And he has not changed from that time to today because the Bible says, if I change, the sons of Jacob will be destroyed. The day God refused to open his eyes, those a little, the devil will rejoice. But the devil will not rejoice over us. God knew us and for that matter, he has planned our life, something good for you and I. It's quite unfortunate that all the people are looking for is results. We don't serve God for results. We serve God for relationship. The devil can even give you a result. Go and ask Pharaoh in the days of Moses. Ask the damsel. With an evil spirit, people were paying her because they were getting a result from a demon. And that result can satisfy you now and destroy your future and better things tomorrow. May that never be our portion. For God's wisdom will make you glorious today and from glory to glory, from increase to increase. I did not hear your amen. And say we need that secret wisdom. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And you cannot get access to it just by studying books. Now, people are serving humans. They want some kind of a great man of God to do something so they will know that ah, now I have arrived. Who told you? If God did not permit it, it will not work. Yes. yes. If God did not permit, it will never work. No matter how much you try. How did I know? Ask Balaam. Ask Balaam. He thought he was smarter than God. God said, you don't go. And he came and told them, I cannot come. That in his heart, he was there. And the people did not know this. That God knew. That a man was enticed with the gift the people brought. And so it was like, but God, why? God, don't you want good things? Oh, really? God wants you to be glorified than you can even imagine. But not the way you think. Because... There is a way that seemed right in the eyes of man. But the beginning of a matter is not as important as the end. And that way that seems best to you in the beginning. You don't know what the end will be. But God who is the Alpha and the Omega knows the end. And knows that if you go that way.
way, no matter how glorious you see from the beginning, mm. the end will be disastrous. Mm. And so instead of going that way, he wants you to, you know, go the other way around. Mm. And you say, but God, why? Mm. It is because he wants you to be the last to laugh. Yes. Mm. He wants you to mm. rejoice. Mm. But there is a way that man has destined himself for. Mm. The fast route. But it kills. Mm -hmm. It destroys. Mm -hmm. At first, if you hear that somebody had died, if you hear there is a funeral ceremony, and sometimes the whole year, more than that, you never see a tent and any funeral waking going on in your area for years. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, you will see that. And the person was 90 something years, 80 something, hundreds. <laughs> and waking was good for people to go. But now, they have to compress funeral upon funeral. So one day, if you are not careful, you have to go to about seven funeral one day. Why? Because now, many people die young. And so it's no more the hundreds. It's no more the nineties. Everybody is dying. And if you go to funerals, about six out of the seven gone too soon. May this never be our portion. Yes. But we can avert this and avoid mm -hmm. when we walk on the narrow way, not the broad way, not the overspeeding way. Uh, what God was showing me this morning, <laughs> I saw three of you. And uh, I have heard this several times. And uh, I saw you. One, <laughs> Rasa Tayanda, one was saying he was fed up working for people, like the conversation we were having yesterday. But this, when I was in the car coming and when I was praying here, I saw the faces. The three people. One was saying, and as I'm speaking, you know that you, are, you have said what I'm about to say. And I know you by this. Mm -hmm. Saying that I'm fed up. I want to have my own business. Mm -hmm. It's not just having your business. People will work for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. People will work for you. Amen. We have seen, and we can say that these are the faces. But there are about five things I saw that I feared. God will do what he says he will do because your life is not what you are praying for will determine what God is going to do for you as if you are remoting God. No. Your life has been predestined, ordained, all through to your end. And so God has already given you what you are looking for, what you want to become. There are counsel within your spirit. I did not hear an amen. amen. They are already yours for your glory. And when you are glorified, the Father will be glorified. Amen. Jesus said, now, Father, glorify your Son. Because the Son glorifies you. And if I'm glorified, you'll be glorified. Yes. Unless we desire to seek what we are seeking in God, mm. we can get them ten mm. times more elsewhere mm -hmm. than they are counterfeit. Yes. Counterfeit are punishable. And the punishment is hell. Mm -hmm. You know, the five 
important I, I saw about these three people was that they were so happy to see themselves having a command because money started working for them. And I saw a storm. The storm was not a literal storm. It was a storm in disguise. One was a situation that you got into the point where all that you've labored for was a stick. And if you say no, then you know you are going down permanently. But if you say yes, you have quitted God permanently. Mm. Mm. I prayed. Mm. And I asked God, what is the remedy? The Spirit of God. Yes. Some of you have already said, you will do your own business. Mm. It has started. I said before, you even started. Mm. But let me tell you, what I saw today was different. Mm. I saw some of you traveling to Africa mm. more than once a year. Mm -hmm. More than once. And things were going well for you. Until somebody showed up in guise of a lover, mm. of a friend, mm. or someone who cares for you. Mm. And it was a tsunami. Mm. It was a storm. Mm. It came in disguise. And that thing destroyed your home. Mm. And so you need to get what you are getting and still maintain that which is good mm -hmm. that God has already given. The third, that our hearts will always see God as though we are looking for everything we have already knew from God, and that we don't care about material things. We know. The joy of death is our relationship with him. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. You live as though the things he has given you were not there. Mm -hmm. You don't even care. You don't value them. Mm -hmm. These were the first things I saw as remedy. Mm -hmm. Salvage to help you skip the trap of the enemy. And do not quit work. God started the manifestation from. Meaning, you don't quit this church. Whether I am still the pastor or God has taken me somewhere else. Whoever God asked me to appoint to take over when I have to go somewhere else you still have to abide. Amen. 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 Defeat. You have to support the church every time. Because it's your umbrella. And support whoever, whether I am still here or I am praying somebody, whoever, support him, whether you are older than him, or he is older than you, whether male or female, submit to the authority because if you do so, you have submitted to me, even in my absence. If you do these things, it shows you have humbled yourself. And the only thing that is left for God to do for you is to exalt you from level to a level to a level. I didn't hear anything. Amen. 
one of the people I saw that I cried and loved so much was he loved his family. But he could not restrain himself from the offer that came. Do you know that if you have one million and one cent gets lost, you are no more a millionaire? <laughs> one time, my friend, Pastor Danny, told me something about 15 years ago. And I still remember today because it came from a mouth of a wise man. Wisdom. The fear of losing. And the desire to add more. And so if you have one million, you, 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 you can become a stingy because you don't want to lose that position as a millionaire. And on top of it all, you want to add up because when you get one million, you want to see and find out how it takes to be in tens of millions. But in God, investment is not only saving and doing business. In God, Giving is also investment. Mm -hmm. Because God said, one man store up for himself, and he became poor. Another man gave, 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 and he became rich. I asked myself, how is this possible? <laughs> because whoever lends might get interest. But even in God, he said, when you learn to a follow Israelite, do not get interest over it. Why are you giving to the person? Because you are obeying the word of God that says do this. And why are you not adding interest? It is because of your love and your fear for God. And so the Bible says, whoever learn or give to a needy has learned to God. And God will pay the interest. I, I did not hear an amen. Some of the interest is that with the enemy men to collapse your business will not find you. That with the unrobbed men to take away from you will never happen. Some of the interest is that which has been planned to make you die young will not find you. People don't see God's wisdom. It's a mystery. But if you get close to God by his spirit, you will know that when God says, I am blessing you, it's not just money. That your health, your soul will prosper. Your health will prosper as your soul has prospered. Can you use money to buy joy? But somebody is broke and he is rejoicing. Somebody does not have hands. Legs and he is rejoicing, mm -hmm. and one who has all these is crying. Mm -hmm. May God speak to somebody. Amen. Are you aware and that by the Spirit of God, God has revealed the things in the Spirit that exist in reality that physically you cannot see? We just read. My version says in verse number. 13. This is what we speak out not in words taught us by human wisdom but in words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but condemn them and call them foolish. The spirit
Spirit of God will make you see the things which are not physically existing and you are rejoicing because you've seen the future already. I say this with an uplifted hand. And the James will watch if I lie. I mentioned my wife's name to him years before I met her and we got married. There are other things that I told him. I said, God has said to me that I don't have to go back to Africa to make my peoples. They will give me my peoples here without going back to Africa. Before I got my peoples, what did the prophet say? He said, I was speaking with him. He said, yeah, uh, Marcus, I saw you going to Ghana to make your peoples. And I did not say anything to him, but in my heart I rejected it because I knew I am a prophet in the eyes of God to me. I did not go to Ghana. In fact, when they saw me, they said, you, it, you are dead. What uh, Connie said, it is too long overdue. They spoke and said, Abuka, Mister, we've agreed you stay here. I was just escorting my wife. Mm -hmm. I did not go there to do anything. Mm -hmm. Because we have two children, I had to carry one. <coughs> then she, she will push one. Mm -hmm. We got there and it happened. But I saw this many years before it happened. By intelligence, by books, no. But by the spirit mm -hmm. of God. That will make you see what God has freely given you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know the reason why Satan is angry, jealous, envious of you? Because God loves you so much. Amen. When he messed up, there was no a second chance for him. Can we count how many times we mess up a day? It's not just a second chance. It's an increase of grace. To be frank and honest, the mistake I will make tomorrow, it has already been erased. And so when I make it, God does not see. The Bible says he does not even judge me. I don't know about you. What my sins deserve. And to prove to me, he says that mercy is new every morning. Before I wake up, the mercy is waiting. And so before I made mistake, it has been erased. For those who belong to Jesus, consent. Amen. Amen. By God's wisdom, he is showing us that there are things that have been revealed by his spirit, but it is not for every eye, but for those who love him. Amen. You know, he gave me a revelation and I wrote it down. I said, when you pay much attention to the physical, you give the devil an advantage over your life. Do you need an explanation? Mm -hmm. If you give too much attention to the physical world, yes. the physical things, what this eye sees, what this ear hears, and the like, what is physical to touch, you place the devil in a position of advantage over your life, and you give the adversary the upper hand. Let me show you real quick one or two things as we are about to pray. We continue the message next, next Sunday. Listen. If you read Luke chapter 4, can't you better read for us Luke chapter 4? Let me look for a verse. Start from verse number, verse number 33. Luke chapter 4 and verse number 33. I want to show you something. Because giving attention, those who hear the voice of their God, huh, 
they are too preoccupied to give attention to what this physical world is doing. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived as human on earth, but Jesus did not live his life for the world. Mm -hmm. He did not go the direction the world was going. He says, what I hear my father say, what I see my father do, these are the things I do. And who was Jesus? The one who was born by the Spirit. Who is the Christian? The one who is born by the Spirit through Christ Jesus to God the Father. Those who believe in him, who receive him and believe in his name, they were given the right to be called children of God like Jesus was born. Children not born by human decision, a man's decision or human will. You go, there was, was confused. He asked, Are you sure I should be born again? Go back to my mother's womb. Jesus said, No. It's not that. But give the spirit the chance. Mm -hmm. Give water the chance. That is the word of God. The water in this sense is the word. The water can be water baptism. But the water of the word is powerful. When we confess with our mouth, when we believe with our heart, we become born again. We are saved. The spirit comes and renew us. Amen. Amen. And so we should live our lives by the detective move of the spirit. The spirit will show you don't go there. Don't go. The spirit says go. Ah, can I go this way? The spirit says go. And you will get there and that which you thought was a mountain. Well, just like, uh, you know, at <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so God, no matter what, you must learn to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. Time to back a read for us. Luke chapter 4. Verse 33. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Maybe read to 35. Uh -huh. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon. Listen, in the church, there was a man possessed by a demon, but he was in the church. And in the synagogue. Uh huh. An evil spirit. An evil spirit. <laughs> he cried out at the top of his voice. Listen, who cried out? At the top of his voice. You know, the interpretation of the Bible must be well understood in the New Testament. And I keep on telling you, if you write from Holland, <laughs> for me, the New Testament. It starts not with what we call the New Testament. Here, the understanding is telling us he cried. So the question is who cried out? The man was possessed by a demon. Do you know what it means? It means he has been robbed of his right. He was no more of himself. He does not have a right. A prisoner does not determine when to wake up and when to sleep, when to eat, because he does not have that right. And so who spoke? You would think it was the man, the spirit. And that was not the spirit of the man. It was the spirit of his master. 
The demon. May we never serve demons. May they be afraid of us. They say, I know Jesus. I don't go near fire. Am I mad? I know about Paul. I don't joke with terrorists. Am I insane? Do I want to die before my time? May the demons know us this way. Amen. 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 You cheat around. You lie to your wife. You lie to your husband. You do everything that demons entertain and make them watch TV. <laughs> why would they not come close to you? Living holy and living. The reason why I am not perfect, but the reason why I have the authority and the power to do what I do is because I try to avoid unnecessary mistakes. I try. If I have to run, I will run. May God help us. Amen. He cried out on top of his voice and said what? Ha, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? You see, Jesus was there to help. So people are in the church. The message that will save them make the man of God rather their enemies. <laughs> yes. Somebody, some group of people unfortunately left the church when we were at uh, Patriot Estra. Just because the message of God came that we should forgive. And one of them, or all of them, about six people, they said it is so me standing with somebody <laughs> in Ternal Central. And when, the, if I remember, when they were passing, they greeted me. And I know they greeted me. But what I did not know, that they, the person they saw me standing with was a member of the church as them. And they said they were not talking. And they believe the person told me. That is why the Sunday I came and said, forgive me. <laughs> and they left the church. Hey! What an abomination. And the truth of the matter before God is the woman I was standing with did not even mention them. <laughs> did not even mention them. And they left the church. Sunday evening I was there and one brother called me and said, these people are angry, they want to leave the church, so uh, please call them and apologize. And I said, what did I do? He said, I don't know why you call. I called and apologized. Till today, <laughs> they themselves did not tell me. <clears throat> Until the same man who called me and said, I should apologize, who also left the church with them, <laughs> later made me to know. And God set confusion, great confusion that could have cost one his life and one imprisonment. And yet he revealed to me and I prayed against it. And it was my elder who was sent to go and solve the problem. How wise humans can be. When you do not have the spirit of God, anything from God is against you. You think that it is for your good. It is for your good that I am sent here. It is for your good that I leave my comfort, my family, to seek God for you. What do you have to do with us, Jesus? Did you come to destroy us? Do you think the man will speak this way? If you put it down, I think a clarification is in us. I think Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13. Let's rise. We are bringing the service to a close. Acts chapter 19 and verse number 13. Read, read, let's mm. see. Maybe there you will see that when people have an evil spirit and they speak, if you say you are listening to man, you have paid attention to the physical and you're giving the devil an upper hand. You are insulting me before you see you've done something that will land you in jail. You speak to me this way.
were your husband. Don't you know I'm a man? You do this, you do that. If you give attention to the physical, you give the enemy the upper hand. The Bible says, when he saw the fruit, the physical fruit with physical eyes, he, he saw and he bypassed. And now the devil came and said, watch it carefully, watch it. And the Bible said, Eve took her time and examined the fruit and came to know that it was desirable and good, pleasing to the eyes and good for food. Ah, what is there in this world? Is that not the last of the eye? The Bible, I took my time and some days to study that particular thing. And I came to know that every other tree God created alongside with the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil were all desirable. Study the Bible. They were all desirable and they were all good. But just that God said, do not eat. Here. It is not eating the food that matter. It is obedience. God was testing the obedience of man. Will you obey me? If you disobey God, whoever you listen to disobey God, you have taken side with that person and you have kicked God out. And his presence, his glory, Shekinah glory will leave you. And unfortunately, that was the devil. And he took over. And now he says, if you worship me, I will give that which God did not give, but man, to you. May we not worship it. Please read that for us as we are closing. Acts chapter 19, verse 13. Uh -huh. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They will say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preach, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Siva, mm -hmm. a Jewish priest, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Uh -huh. The best thing, uh -huh. Were doing this. Mm -hmm. One day. The evil spirit answered them. Who answered them? The evil spirit. <laughs> Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So who spoke to them? The spirit. spirit. Who beat them? It was not the spirit that beat them. It was the man that beat them. Is that not what the Bible says? The man jumped on them and beat them by the energy of the evil spirit. You don't understand, but you have heard. I pray you understand. It was the evil spirit who speaks. When Peter spoke, Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. The evil spirit spoke, and the people thought they, they were dealing with just him. One of them had the guts to lock the door and put the key in his pocket. We are going to do deliverance. And then the man said, Okay. Okay, come. And he charged by the anointing of the demon. <laughs> Broke the first person's job. The rest were running away and they could not find the key. He beat them. And so they had to break the door and they ran for their lives. Do not pay much attention to the physical. Detect what you hear and fish out the voice of God and fish out if the demon is involved. Sometimes I have told you, 
your strength is zip out. Don't say anything. But whatever you say can be used against you in the court of the spirit realms. And uh, destroy yourself. But sometimes all you need to say is, Father, in the name of Jesus.